Hello 108 students, Mr. McHugh here with you for section 8.7. Going to work with complex numbers. We're going to figure out what the heck that's all about here on page 2. And uh, we're just going to do a quick review here of example number 2 here. We talked about this in the previous, but here's another example of a negative number times another negative number. And it, it does not equal negative 3 times negative 27 and a positive 21. You got to get that out of your brain. I make a big deal about that in class, okay? It's hard. Now, what you can tell yourself is you know taking the square roots of negative numbers produces i. So you could say an i times an i is i squared, which is negative 1. Or you just might start coming down here and feel comfortable with the shortcut that if you see two negative numbers being multiplied, the end result is going to be a negative. 3 times 7 is 21. Can't break it down, and that would be your answer. Okay, now here's a little detail work over here that you do enough of these, you start memorizing this pretty quick, and you don't have to show every step of these. Okay, remember, i squared equals negative 1. It allows you to go back and forth, excuse me, allows you to go back and forth between imaginary and the real world. Okay, so here's an example C that has only one negative number, negative 5 times negative 6. Well, so you know, if I, when I see this right off the bat, I come down there and I would say, there's your i, because you got square root of negative 1, you know you're going to replace it with an i. 5 times 6 now is 30, and your square root of 30, you can't break that down anymore, and, and you're, you're good to go. You multiply the two radicals. Okay, so example 3, we're going to deal with um, um, taking square roots uh, with division, dividing square roots. And um, off to the side here on my notes, I've got square root of 70, negative 75 and square root of negative 3. And I wrote negative i because of the um, negative 1 in there times the square root of 75. Divided by a ne the negative 3 brings out the negative, it's not a negative i, excuse me, it's a positive i, I don't know why I'm saying negative, forget that, what the heck am I doing, square root of negative 1 is i, square root of 3 is here, now i divided by i cancels out, okay, now, I want to get you to think that way, I'm real hesitant at telling you, because you can see the pattern, negative divided by negative is a positive and it goes away, but I, 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 like, I don't like to encourage too many rules that you have to remember, okay? So I want you to think of more that when you're taking the square root of a negative 1, you get the i. So i divided by i equals 1. I think that's a little easier. And then 75 divided by 3 can be can be regrouped, and you get the square root of 25, and your final answer is 5. Okay. Uh, same idea over here, but in this case, look at this. It's, it's one negative number, so you know that's going to produce the i in your final answer. So you could stick that there. 32 divided by 8, you could grow, all group it under one radical. So 32 divided by 8 is 4, the so square root of negative 4. From here, you go ahead and, and put your i. Square root of 4 is 2, and you got your answer. Okay. Um, uh, hopefully, you're feeling pretty comfortable with those. Um, we now are going to go ahead and, and deal with an objective number 2. What the heck am I talking about when I say complex number? Okay, complex usually means it's got uh, it's hard. Okay, it's got different parts to it, and I want you to realize here now that a complex number is a way for us to to relate the structure of having a real number part and an imaginary part. We've been dealing with real numbers all along. We've got um, rational real numbers and irrational, but they've always been real. They always make sense. A complex number is what happens if you've got a real number and you add or subtract an imaginary part with with the letter I. That's what's going on. Okay, now, um, if you got your books with you or your e-books, if you could turn to page uh, 476, figure number 11, and take a look at that diagram block diagram they have here. It's the same thing I'm trying to relate here. I made mine just a tad easier to look at. Uh, I like to work vertically. They like to work sideways. So the idea is this. A complex number. Now again, don't let all these letters mess you up here. They are going to use letters to help represent, kind of like the lawyer he's writing, but you're going to have a complex number has got two components. It's got the real number, which we're going to use um, the letter A 
represent a real number like 5 or 17 or negative 23 and you're going to add or subtract an imaginary component and the, the a and b are real numbers and the i is our imaginary variable okay so you're just merging the two of them complex numbers nothing more than a real number and an imaginary number put together now what happens is you go well geez if that's the case what's the story with real numbers well real numbers you've got a is a number and in this case the form a plus b i is, is the form we work with a plus b i okay that's what the book uses i'll go with the two now what happens all along every number you've been writing like the number five you could have wrote five plus zero i now that'd be kind of silly because what's zero times anything zero and zero added to five gives you a five so Thank God our elementary teachers did not introduce uh, real numbers back then, or we would get an extremely tired writing plus zero i for everything we want. Every time we want to write a simple counting number. Okay, so look at my notes. B equals zero, thus zero times i is zero, leaving you the real number represented by a. Okay, imaginary numbers. Guess what it is? The form a plus b i. Now a is zero. So what if I say zero plus 3i. Well, that would just leave you 3i and that would just be your imaginary number like we've been talking about and the real component is doesn't exist because it has a value of 0. And thus only when you have something like 5 plus 3i do you oops does it stick out that you've got a complex number the real component and the imaginary component. Okay, um, that's the basic idea of complex numbers. So we're going to do some multiplying of them here in page 3, I believe. Let me look. Uh, well, first we're going to add and subtract them and do some multiplication. So we're going to tackle these on page 3. Okay, Mr. McHugh, going to sign off here on page 2, and I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, take care. Bye.